The most egregious pacing issue is in the level design. But while Lords of the Fallen's locations are long on atmosphere, they're also sprawling and twisting in a way that makes them painful to navigate. <laughs> Come on now, dawg. Come on, man. Gaming journalists and trash takes go hand in hand. And today is no different. Yesterday we had skill up with his questionable takes. And now it's gonna get worse. Because GameSpot reviewed Lords of the Fallen and gave it a 5 out of 10. That is only 1 point above Redfall. Just let that sink in for a minute. Now obviously... The main gripe that they have with the game is the level design, right? It's too complicated. It's too interconnected. Not enough checkpoints. It's like they never played a Souls game before. So without further ado, let's dive deep in this pile of cringe. However, in practice, the Umbral only adds to Lords of the Fallen's underlying issues. It contributes to throwing off the pacing of exploring the game's world, and adds to, rather than alleviates, frustrations in combat. The most egregious pacing issue is in the level design. The game takes you through a variety of dark fantasy locales that are all suitably ravaged and horrific, and when paired with frequent leaps into the Umbral, they create a frightening place to explore. But while Lords of the Fallen's locations are long on atmosphere, they're also sprawling and twisting in a way that makes them painful to navigate. Right, so he's complaining about the sprawling and twisting level design. Meanwhile, that's one of the greatest selling points of the Dark Souls series. Elden Ring didn't quite have that because it's open world and you can teleport whenever you want. You can go back to a bonfire. But the Dark Souls series was praised for its intricate level design. It's like these gaming journalists really want to get their hand held every step of the way. If you want someone to hold your hand continuously throughout the game, go play Forspoken. You're even going to have a nice gauntlet that tells you everything you have to do every 30 seconds. The primary problem is the checkpoint system. As in other Souls likes, every so often in Lords of the Fallen, you'll come across a vestige. Here you can level up, fast travel to other vestiges, and rest, which refills your health and the healing charges in your Sanguinatrix, while also respawning all the enemies in the area. Vestiges you find in the world are permanent, but they're few and far between. However, you can also create your own checkpoints at specific places by placing an item called an Umbral Seed in a flower bed found in the Umbral. As an idea, the Umbral Seeds sound like a potential improvement on the usual Souls-like approach to checkpoints, but they're actually a mess. Seeds are rare, mostly coming from defeating bosses. Couple this lack of checkpoints with levels that pile tough enemies together in rapid succession, and it's a recipe for frustration. Many times when you enter a new area, you'll jump into a mini boss fight against an enemy that's not quite as tough as Lords of the Fallen's main bosses, but tough enough. Soon after you defeat these enemies, you'll start seeing them in levels as regular enemies. The thing is, Lords of the Fallen has a tendency to reward killing a big former boss enemy with just another one ahead. And another one after that. And another one after that. Stacking enemies like these in a row means long, slow fight after long, slow fight, where a mistake or two means death. And that means redoing all those other long, slow fights. A mistake or two means death. Yes, this is a Souls-like. If you're not careful and you do a mistake, you will die and then you'll have to run back to your Souls. Now, I don't understand why he's complaining about difficult enemy design. That is a selling point of the series. It's like, I wonder if these guys are expecting a Souls-like to play like a Kirby game. No, it's going to be challenging. It's going to be difficult. That's one of the appeal of these games. There's no gaming journalist mode. Everybody plays on the same footing. I'm going to give you an analogy just to prove how crazy his rating is. Let's say I was hired to review a football game, the new Madden, and I say, uh, you know, there's too much running after the ball, 5 out of 10. It doesn't make any fucking sense, dude. That is the entire point of the game challenging encounters, unforgiving combat design, 
and intricate level design. All his issues with the game are massive selling points. Now throw in extensive side paths, umbral detours, and shortcuts that take you into cul-de-sacs in every level, often without you realizing it. These areas are just as dangerous as the main pathway and look just as important, but mostly just to hand out weapons and armor. On numerous occasions, I lost hours in Lords of the Fallen to side areas that didn't matter, full of battles that weren't necessary, usually rewarding me with weapons my character stats couldn't handle. You gotta be fucking kidding me. You were rewarded with weapons that your character stats couldn't handle, then level up! It's not rocket science, dude. This guy is literally complaining that there are too many secret areas with secret gear to find. This is all the stuff that Souls-like enthusiasts actually want in a game. You want side content, optional content, nooks and crannies to explore, secrets to unveil. It's like, what is wrong with this guy? He's literally describing everything that makes a good Souls-like and calling it an issue. Lords of the Fallen's levels are so full of irritating, lengthy fights with so few rewards in the form of safe places for a breather that at some point I started just sprinting past whole hordes of enemies. It's generally quicker, easier, and less tedious to just run for it. The messy checkpoints and confusing level design undercut what fun there might have been in exploring the beautiful world of Lords of the Fallen. And yet pacing issues persist even in the combat, as every battle, from skirmishes with the game's common foes to titanic clashes with its best bosses, seems to take forever. There's a bit of a joke in the Souls community that if you're having trouble with a boss, try dodging left. Often it's a simple way to slip under attacks and can turn seemingly impossible battles into trivial tangles. In Lords of the Fallen, you don't need to dodge left if you dodge at all. The dodging system is incredibly forgiving, providing you a ton of invincibility frames within the animation to avoid all damage from an attack, even if you dodge late or poorly. Generally, dodging is so effective that there's rarely any need to use the game's blocking or parrying systems. Dodge left, attack, win, fight. All right, so let me get this straight. The fights are too long, even against the bosses, they take way too long. But the combat is too easy because you have too many iframes and all you have to do is dodge it left to win. Make it make sense, dude, because right now it doesn't. I found that the parrying system, it is efficient. It takes more parries to actually stun lock the enemy, but especially since I was just playing Lies of P, I find myself parrying quite often in Lords of the Fallen. And what's great is that you can parry with any weapon, not just a shield. So I think that's pretty useful. But yeah, this guy is not making any sense whatsoever. I wonder if GameSpot is low on employees and they put the Nintendo game reviewer to play this game or something, because this is not adding up whatsoever. With dodging so incredibly forgiving, it's pretty easy to get the sense of a fight, even against a tough boss, after a few tries. But Souls likes are supposed to be difficult, right? You can't just steamroll a boss by slipping past every single attack and laying into them during the openings. These things are supposed to challenge players, to give them a sense of accomplishment, to take many tries. To compensate for the extremely generous, and it must be noted, extremely fun to use, dodge, Lords of the Fallen puts the brakes on the speed with which you can take an enemy down. Sure, you can slip past four or five swings and get in an attack or two when there's an opening, but it feels like the health pool on every enemy and especially bosses, is massive. And combat can be fun, especially against the game's most imaginative and challenging bosses. But the game just can't get the proportions right. The fun of risk and reward gameplay comes from actually earning the rewards. If the rewards aren't good enough, or if the risk is too heavy, the fun turns to frustration. For all of Lords of the Fallen's good ideas, it struggles to make the payoff worthy of the investment. It's meandering, level design, and slogging encounters turn challenge into tedium, leaving a feeling that getting up and doing something else would be time better spent. Five out of 10, really, five out of 10. 
I feel like the reviewer is not being genuine here because even if this is not his favorite genre, which clearly it isn't, because he fails to recognize the main selling points of the genre, you cannot objectively say that this game is a 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10 is extremely bad. I mean, I can't believe he put this game one point above Redfall, when Redfall was a pointless cash grab with no soul and no purpose. This game, on the other hand, is delivering exactly what the fans want. A difficult, souls-like, with intricate level design. But somehow, this gaming journalist fails to see that. Anyways, it is what it is. I didn't expect anything else from a gaming journalist. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section. And I'll see you guys on the next one.